Okay, I think we're ready to get started this afternoon. Yep. And uh, the question before us today is the translation of the word slave in the Bible. There's three main Hebrew words to be considered. Evid is the most general, broad term that, that's typically rendered servant and sometimes slave. Then for women who are in servitude, typically shifcha and ama are your, your standard terms, and they don't all have to be handled the same way. All right, thank you. Now, uh, I think others who wish to... Just a few things. Um, thinking of the principal male word, eved, it occurs a lot in the Bible. It's about 800 times. Mm -hmm. And the majority of those, we currently have a servant. But if you were to make the word slave consistent and start using it for the verb, then you, you'd end up being slaves um, before God, you'd be slaving for him and so on. So I feel the most consistent way is to put servant everywhere. If you look at the dictionaries, it's quite clear that the difference between a servant and a slave is whether they are owned by the master or whether they're paid by their employer. And it's quite clear in many passages in the Old Testament where it talks about Eved, that the person is owned, is regarded as part of the property of that person. Um, I think we are getting confused and reluctant to use the word slave because we think that because there is the, I, the word slave that the Old Testament approves of slavery. And I think it's very much better to say that the Old Testament is trying to improve the life of slaves rather than pretending they're not slaves. Okay. Anyone want any sort of clarification from the report? Okay, then, then I would ask Jack, you want to follow up with right, something right. quickly? Um, I don't think I disagree with anything that Gordon has said, uh, and I'm not sure I disagree with very much that, that Peter has said. And that's the challenge uh, that, that we're facing, and that uh, as an American, the term slave um, is, is a term that, that, is, that is difficult to think of as a humanized uh, institution at all. Although, surprising, surprisingly enough, some of my African-American correspondents are less sensitive about that than I am. So, uh, Wayne, you want to ask a, or make a comment about the Old Testament side of things? When we as scholars use the word slave, we have in mind something of a study of the background of slavery as it existed at the time of the Old Testament, slavery at the time of the New Testament, and we can understand nuances of it. But for the average English reader, the word slave has um, irredeemably negative associations and connotations. In people's minds, it's a permanent condition, whereas in the Old Testament, and cer cer certainly in the time of the New Testament, it's temporary, it leads to a freedom. And it was often voluntary, at least in the first century. Number two, slavery in the Old Testament or the New Testament was not primarily racial, it was economic. And third, it was often a situation that had status and carried considerable legal protections. And for those reasons, I think we are importing highly inaccurate understandings of the meaning of the term. I think it's time for us to vote without, right. do, okay, we're not needing summaries. In the text of 1 Corinthians 7, the change is at four instances from slave to bondservant. Uh, those who are in favor, please raise your hands. We have nine. Those opposed, uh, we have three. Thank you. So do we want to take our break now? And if so, for yeah, how long? I think that would be a good idea. To, uh, I think it would be an appropriate thing to just give thanks to the Lord for right. the way he has led us um, through this uh, path. Dear Father, what a delight it is to be your children, members of your household under your care.